Our Blessed Lady de Mercede, or For the Redemption of Captives, Our Lady of Ransom, by Father Francis Cuthbert Doyle, 1896, feast day, September 24th. The appropriateness of this beautiful title, given in 1218 to Our Lady, will be best understood from a narration of the events which led to the institution of this festival in her honor and to the foundation of a religious order under the same glorious appellation. In the year 1189, there was born in Languedoc a nobleman named Peter Nolasco, who so God-filled, even in his earliest years, with a great love of virtue and with a tender compassion for the poor. At the age of 25, he made a vow of chastity, and joined himself to Simon de Montfort in his crusade against the Albigensian heretics. After the defeat of this latter, James I, King of Aragon, appointed him tutor to his son, whom he accompanied into Spain. At that time, the Moors had seized upon certain parts of the pen peninsula, and the sight of the misery to which Christians were reduced in slavery under these cruel taskmasters filled the heart of Peter with the desire to lighten their heavy burden. While revolving in his mind how his good will might best be carried into effect, Our Lady appeared to him in a vision during the night and intimated to him that it would be very pleasing to her divine son if an order of religious men were, were established for the redemption of captives. On the following day, Peter went to his confessor, St. Raymond de Pinafort, to tell of him the vision with which he had been favored. But to his great surprise, he found the saint already acquainted with the fact, for the same heavenly visitant had graciously signified her wish to him also. Moreover, she had revealed to the king that this project had the blessing of her divine son, these three, therefore, at once determined to establish a religious order for the purpose of redeeming captive Christians from the tyranny of the Moors. In addition to the usual vows of religion, they, by a fourth vow, bound themselves to remain, if necessary, in captivity till ransom could be procured for the liberation of the slaves. Pope Honorius III, by word of mouth, approved of this brotherhood, and Pope Gregory the fourth in 1235 solemnly confirmed and established it as a religious order he gave its members the rule of saint augustine to guide them to perfection and a white habit to remind them of the purity to which they were to aspire under the patron of the mo of the most pure virgin thus under the auspices of our lady of redemption these holy men set about their heroic work and while rescuing the bodies of Christians from the slavery of the Moors, they did their utmost to free their souls from the slavery of the devil. You may judge from this indication of Mary's love for the Christian people, and from her eagerness to free their bodies from the tyranny of cruel and infidel masters, what must be her zeal to free them from the still more cruel slavery of Satan? They are her children, committed to her care by Jesus Christ, loved by him with unutterable tenderness and purchased at the price of his bitter passion. In her eyes they are, so to speak, invested with the personality of Jesus Christ. They are, in a measure, unto, what, unto her what he was, and therefore the love which she bore to him is transferred to them. Judge, therefore, of her sorrow, when she beholds them in the jaws of the wolves of hell, when men lose their liberty and fall beneath the yoke of a foreign power. It is their bodies only that are in chains, their minds, their souls are free. No dungeon can darken their light, no manacles, no fetters can bind down their thoughts or their aspirations. The tyrant may threaten, may kill, but he cannot compel the will to bend. If, as a last resource, he strike with the sword, one sharp pain will forever free the poor wretched prisoner from his clutches. It is far otherwise with the tyranny of the devil. 
He enslaves the souls of men with a tempting bait. He first allures them into his nets, and having once entrapped them, he holds them fast. Very speedily sin enfeebles the will, darkens the intellect, and fills the soul with disgust for heavenly things. Hence, when from time to time grace urges it to rise again, it may do so for a, for a season, feeling all the while how terribly strong is the hold which the devil has upon its powers. It struggles against him for a while, and then falls back. Thus the evil one, by his tyranny, succeeds in destroying not only the bodies of his slaves, but their immortal souls. Therefore Jesus bids us not to fear those who can destroy only the body. I will tell you, he adds, whom you shall fear, fear him who can destroy the soul. Our dear mother is, therefore, full of tender solicitude for her children. When she beholds them in the power of this cruel enemy of her son, she lifts up her pure and spotless hands before the throne of God and continually pleads with him for them that the ransom of the precious blood may be applied to them, that their chains may be broken, and that they may be restored to liberty. Knowing, therefore, the great love of your holy mother Mary for poor sinners, you must strive to the utmost of your ability to second her desire for the redemption of, this, of souls from the slavery of sin. In order that your zeal may be according to knowledge, you must begin with yourself, for otherwise you will present to the eyes of both of angels and of men the ridiculous spectacle of one who saves others but destroys himself, who points out to others the way to heaven but will not himself walk in it. Do not be so foolish. Let not sin dwell in your soul. Suffer it not to enslave your heart. Be not of the number of those who fools with fa who fancy that they can for a time walk with the devil and then easily withdraw from his fellowship, who imagine that they must float with the stream and then return in safety to the pleasant shore. Those who think thus little know the tenacious grasp with which sin holds a man down in its iron fetters, nor the velocity with which the stream of iniquity whirls him behind, beyond the reach of help or the hope of return. If you are wise, learn this in time. Withdraw your feet at once and forever from the fetters of sin and turn your back resolutely upon the glitter of the tempting stream. After thus manifesting zeal for your own soul, you may venture to be zealous for the souls of others. For he who is in safety may strive to help others, and he who is not sick may be, may with propriety try to heal those who are. Prayer of a Sinner to Our Lady of Mercy from the Glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus Liguari O my Sovereign Queen and worthy Mother of God, Most Holy Mother Mary, I seeing myself as i do so despicable and loaded with so many sins ought not to presume to call thee mother or even to approach thee yet i will not allow my miseries to deprive me of the consolation and confidence that i feel in calling thee mother i know well that i deserve that thou shouldst reject me but i beseech thee to remember all that thy son jesus has endured for me and then reject me if thou canst. I am a wretched sinner, who, more than all others, have despised the infinite majesty of God. But the evil is done. To thee I have recourse. Thou canst help me. My mother, save me. Help me. Say not that thou canst not do so, for I know that thou art all-powerful, and that thou obtainest whatever thou desirest of God. And if thou sayest that thou wilt not help me, tell me at least to whom I can apply in this my so great misfortune. Either pity me, will I say with the devout Saint Anselm, O my Jesus, and forgive me, or do thou pity me, my mother Mary, by interceding for me, or at least tell me to whom I can have recourse who is more compassionate, or in whom I can have greater confidence than in thee. Oh no. Neither on earth nor in heaven can I find any one who has more compassion for the miserable, 
or who is more better able to assist me than thou canst, O Mary. Thou, O Jesus, art my father, and thou, Mary, art my mother. You both love the most miserable, and go seeking them in order to save them. I deserve hell, and the most miserable of all, but you need not seek me, nor do I presume to ask so much. I now present myself before you with the certain hope that I shall not be abandoned. Behold me at your feet, my Jesus, forgive me. My mother Mary, help me. Prayer to Our Lady of Mercy from the Recalta, 1878 Holiest Mary, Mother of goodness, Mother of mercy, when I reflect on my sins and on the moment of my death, I tremble and am filled with confusion. My sweetest mother, in the blood of Jesus and in thy intercession are my hopes. Comfort of the afflicted, abandon me not at the, my death agony. Fail not to console me in that great affliction. If even now I am so tormented by remorse for sin committed, by the uncertainty of forgiveness, by the danger of a relapse, and the rigor of divine justice, how will it be with me then? Mother, before death overtake me, obtain for me a great sorrow for my sins, a true amendment, and a constant fidelity to God, in all that yet remains of, to me of life. And when indeed my hour is come, then do thou, Mary, be my hope. Be thou mine aid in the anguish in which my soul will be overwhelmed. When the enemy sets before my face my sins, oh, comfort me then, that I may not despair. Obtain for me at the moment to invoke thee often, that with thine own sweet name, that of thy most holy Son upon my lips, I may breathe forth my spirit. This grace thou hast granted to many of thy servants, I too desire it and hope to obtain it. Hail Mary three times. Prayer of St. Ephraim to the Blessed Virgin Mary O Immaculate and Holy Pure Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Queen of the world, hope of those who are in despair, thou art the joy of the saints, thou art the peacemaker between sinners and God, thou art the advocate of the abandoned, the secure haven of those who are on the sea of the world. Thou art the consolation of the world, the ransom of slaves, the comfortress of the afflicted, the salvation of the universe. Our great queen, we take refuge in thy protection. We have no confidence but in thee, O most faithful virgin. After God, thou art all our hope. We bear the name of thy servants. Allow not the enemy to drag us to hell. I salute thee, O great Queen of Peace, between men and God, Mother of Jesus our Lord, who is the love of all men and of God, to whom be honor and benediction with the Father and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Supplication to Our Lady of Ransom To obtain the favor of her patronage till death can be said for nine consecutive days as a novena. The more exalted she is, the greater her clemency and sweetness to, towards penitent sinners, St. Gregory. Sweet Mother, turn those gentle eyes of pity down on me. O oh, hear thy suppliant's tearful cries. My humble prayer do not despise, star of the pathless sea. In dark temptation's dreary hour, to thee, bright queen, we flee. O oh, then exert a mother's power. When storms are rough and tempests lower, star of the raging sea. Throw all my joys and cares, sweet maid. May I still look on thee, who bore the price our ransom paid. And ne'er the suppliant's cry had stayed, star of the azure sea. And when my last expiring sigh, my soul from earth shall free. Do thou, bright queen of saints, stand by, and bear it up to God on high, star of the boundless sea. Say the Hail Mary three times, followed by the Hail Holy Queen in Latin or English. Indulgence of five years each time. S.P.A.P. July 2, 1934.